Sword Soul is a Yu-Gi-Oh! archetype introduced in Burst of Destiny, which has been seeing considerable success in the OCG so far. With the deck landing in the TCG on October 22nd of this year, now is the perfect time to get familiar with what is sure to be a top-tier strategy. I'll be doing this video in the style of my Dogmatica Invoked guide from early last year, which you guys received very well. If you like this one too, let me know in the comments below, and take a moment to hit subscribe so that I can find the motivation to make more content like this. The primary engine monsters for the Sword Soul are Mo Yi, Tai A, and Long Yuan. All three have an effect in common, and the whole archetype revolves around this fact. Each one is joined on the field by a level 4 worm water token that just so happens to be a tuner. Before you get too excited though, they saw you coming, Hauka Fibrax, and the token restricts you to synchro summoning while on the field. Mo Yi is arguably the best of the three. A level 4 water worm with respectable stats, on summon, she makes the token by revealing a sword soul card or worm monster in hand. Mo Yi technically requires the least setup, but she's not necessarily your starter and will often be sent from deck to grave by Tai A. As if being an easy level 8 synchro wasn't enough, Mo Yi allows you to draw a card when she is sent to the grave as synchro material, chain blocking your synchro's effect and making it summon a net plus in card advantage. Play 3. Tai A is a level 4 wind worm monster whose stats are also quite good. It's honestly refreshing to see an archetype that can just put decent sized monsters on field. Tai A summons our token friend by banishing one sword soul card or worm monster from your graveyard. Are you beginning to see the pattern? The sword soul cards tend to interact equally with their own cards and generic worms, opening up a few possibilities for supportive engines, especially Ten Yi. Let's not jump ahead though. Tai A is an ignition effect, which means that you're not required to activate it on summon. This provides you with some flexibility in comboing versus Mo Yi, whose trigger effect must be activated immediately. Early testing has revealed Tai A to be an optimal way to start your Sword Soul plays, despite the graveyard setup involved, because he has the ability to send one Sword Soul card or Worm Monster from your deck to the graveyard when you sync with him. This ability can allow you to extend further than the usual combo with Baxia, Brightness of the Yang Zing, who can summon back the monster you send, ideally Mo Yi, for another level 8 Synchro Summon. Play 2 to 3 of Tai A. Long Yuan is a level 6 fire worm with a big ol' booty. He's your sole path to higher level synchros, especially the deck's level 10 boss monster, Cheng Ying. Long Yuan's ability is tried and true. Discard one sword soul card or worm monster to special summon him from your hand, along with the token tuner. While the deck revolves around level 8's, ideal end boards will include Cheng Ying or the monster negating Baroness de Flore for extra disruptions, so he's a card you want to see early and often. In contrast with the others, Long Yuan's effect activates and resolves in the hand, so cards like Effect Veiler and Infinite Impermanence can't stop your high level synchro plays. Meaning his condition is very easy too, especially when running the Ten Yi package. Almost as an afterthought, Long Yuan has a graveyard effect as well, burning the opponent for 1200 damage when he's used as material for a synchro summon. Cheesy ways to win in time at important events are always appreciated. Triff knows what I'm talking about. Play 3 of Long Yuan. The Sword Soul deck has a small but nice selection of supporting spells and traps, each with two effects, one on activation, which varies, and one in common that triggers upon being banished. For spells, it lets you pull a virtual world-esque level modulation by one, up or down. Important for some synchro toolbox options we'll discuss later. For traps, simple and amazing. Special summon the level 4 tuner token. A brilliant extender. Every great archetype needs a rota, and the Sword Soul Dragon Sword appears, delivers on that. On activation, it searches your deck for any Sword Soul monster or any worm if you have a synchro on the field. I won't waste any words saying why this effect is great. What I will say is that the ideal search target for this is usually Tai A, because this card will be setting up for his tuner summoning effect, which requires a card to be banished from grave to activate. This setup allows you the flexibility to play only two Tai A if you need the space. Play three of Dragon Sword. 
From Rhoda to Monster Reborn, here's the Sword Soul Grand Spiritual Peak. This mighty mountain resurrects one Sword Soul monster from your graveyard, or any worm if you have a Synchro on your field. A solid extender that combos well with Taiye's dump effect and the Tengi package, Peak suffers similarly to other current Reborn cards like World Legacy Succession or the original. Most modern decks are consistent and resilient enough that they never need to use a spell to summon back from grave. Sword Soul is no different, but with how easily this card is accessed and its potential to save an interrupted play, it's worth playing one or two. In my opinion, only one of the traps is worthwhile. Sword Soul Sudden Shift is an Icarus attack for Zoomers. It targets a worm on your side of the field and exactly two cards on your opponent's side and pops them all. I mentioned the archetype boss monster, Cheng Ying, earlier. A worm monster, he's a valid target for this card and has a Thunder Dragon Colossus type ability to protect himself from destruction, comboing nicely. Another great target for Sudden Shift is Ting Yi Monk, which will often be left on the field into your opponent's turn. Sudden Shift is a powerful, consistent, and easily accessible piece of disruption that makes even the deck's weakest openings challenging to play around. Play 2-3. While the spells and traps are used for their primary effects and not their level modulation and token lines, these secondary effects can play a significant role in adding versatility to the deck's follow-up plays and ensuring that you'll have access to the whole range of your Synchro toolbox, especially when the game state is under the whims of the deadly duo, the Sword Soul Synchros. The Sword Soul do not ask much of your extra deck. Against many decks, your two archetypal Synchros will be enough to win so you'll want to keep at least 3-4 to four slots for them. Beyond that though, you have 11-12 to 12 spaces that you can tech the hell out of. Sword Soul very naturally goes into level 8 and 10 synchros, along with the occasional 12 to show off. With their spell's level mod effect in consideration, along with the level 1 Tengi tuner, they can also do 7s and 9s. Within these levels are some of the most powerful synchros in the game, with the most incredible range of effects. Archetypally, Sword Soul only have two extra deck monsters. The first is Cheng Ying, the Sword Soul Grand Duke, a level 10 water worm type with 3000 attack and defense. His first effect is a plus 100 attack for all of your opponent's banished monsters. I guess that's okay? It can add up, but it won't come up in most matches, I imagine. The second is the Colossus Protection from earlier. His last effect is the real deal, though. If a card is banished except during the damage step, he banishes one card from your opponent's field and grave, hard once per turn. This mini Trish effect is easily triggered on both the opponent's turn and your own, making it a potent piece of removal going second or an extra disruption going first. Play 1-2. to two. Ching Ying has nothing on the next guy, though. Qi Xiao, the Sword Soul Grand Swordmaster, is the centerpiece of the deck and your major extra deck extender. This card is a level 8 Light Worm Synchro with an impressive 2800 attack. When summoned, he searches or banishes one Sword Soul card from your deck. Remember, when banished, the spells and traps secondary effects trigger, meaning that Qi Xiao is the most versatile card in the deck, setting you up for any play in the deck's arsenal. As if that wasn't enough, Qi Xiao has a quick effect. By banishing a Sword Soul card or Worm monster from your hand or graveyard, he can target a monster on the field and negate its effects until the end of the turn. Not only is this a solid disruption effect, but it also reliably triggers Cheng Ying's Trishula effect. The card's drawback is barely mentionable. You can only use one effect or the other per turn, not both, which means that using it to break boards prevents you from searching, but going first you'll have full access to this card's utility. You will undoubtedly summon him multiple times per game, so run 2-3. to three. While weaker hands may only allow one level 8 synchro summon per turn, which will likely be reserved for Qi Xiao, hands with easy access to extenders can take advantage of a large toolbox of level 8 synchros, including one insanely powerful worm whose use has been limited to Yang Xing strategies in the past. Baxia, Brightness of the Yang Zing, has two amazing effects. The first breaks boards in an amazing way. On summon, he spins opponent's cards back to the deck, up to the number of different attributes among the worms used as materials. With so many attributes represented in the deck between the Sword Souls and Tang Yi's, you will frequently be spinning two cards, and using Tai A for the summon means that Baxia will be chain blocked. That's good, because you'll want to protect him for his ignition effect. 
Once per turn, Baxia can destroy one card in your field to special summon one level 4 or lower monster from your graveyard. This effect is a terrific extender, capable of summoning back a Taie or Moye for another push, or Tangy Spirit Adhara for a level 1 tuner to make a level 9 synchro play. There hasn't been a deck since 2017's Dinosaur Yang Zing that has been able to use Baxia at this level, so make him a focal point of your plays, and run 2. From this point though, all synchros are played at 1, if at all. Cyframe Lord Omega's reputation speaks for itself. Omega is one of the most powerful synchro monsters of modern Yu-Gi-Oh! and has been a fixture of synchro decks since 2015. Here, he has the added utility of triggering Chang Ying and recycling banished pieces, especially Tin Yi's, for reuse. Another commonly run level 8 synchro is Draco Berserker of the Ten Yi. Although not often made because of the niche application of its effect, Berserker is well positioned right now, checking cards like Sky Striker, Ace Ray, Salamangrate Spinny, and the Drytron monsters. Additionally, Berserker is the only level 8 worm synchro besides Qi Xiao and Baxia, so he can be made when his fellow Ten Yi's lock you into worms for the turn. Honorable mention goes to Crimson Blader, which will likely see play if this deck becomes popular as a counter in the mirror. A relic of the Dragon Ruler era, this card may see new usage since it prevents the opponent from summoning level 5 or higher monsters the turn after it destroys a monster by battle. This locks Sword Soul out of any impactful plays. Other viable options include Scarlight Red Dragon Archfiend for board clears and burn damage. An Emancipator Risen Dragite for spell and trap negation, and Stardust Dragon or Stardust Spark Dragon to protect back row. There are two main cards to talk about in the level 10 Synchro pool. The first will be a staple of Sword Soul decks and releases three months later in January, Baroness de Flore. This card does a lot. Primarily, it serves as an Omni Negate that is easy to put on the field with Long Yuan. Baroness also does spot removal though, and if she survives to your next turn, you can send her back to extra deck to recycle her and use her negate again, and as an added bonus, summon back any level 9 or lower monster in your grave. The second level 10 synchro is very format dependent. Ruddy Rose Dragon banishes all cards from both players' graveyards, demolishing strategies like Drytron that depend on playing from their graveyard. In less graveyard-focused matchups, this card isn't very useful though, so it's definitely something that's metagame dependent. There are only two level 9 synchros that you need to know about. Chao Fang, Phantom of the Yang Zing, is ideally made using Baxia and a level 1 tuner because that unlocks its best effect, preventing all your opponent's light monster's effects from activating. Some decks will just not be able to play, like Drytron. Some will lose their ability to hit you with Nibiru. Chao Fang has more niche effects too, but the focus in this deck is on the Floodgate effect. Speaking of Floodgates, Virtual World Shin Shin is an additional option at the level 9 slot. Its Dimensional Fissure effect can beat many weaker decks on its own and present a challenging hurdle to combo decks that rely on Graveyard Recursion. Keep it in mind as a meta call. You will not often go into level 7 synchros, but the two that are played are powerful. Yazi, Evil of the Yang Zing, is a phenomenal going second card, able to destroy a card your opponent controls and set up a summon of any worm monster from the deck. It can help you break through boards while ensuring you're still able to play. Its protection from targeting may prove useful in mirror matches, too. Black Rose Dragon is still the best board wipe available in the Synchro Toolbox. Make her going second to give your opponent a bad time. I'll admit that this one is a stretch, but it stood out. Mathmech Final Sigma is a level 12 synchro that is unaffected by other cards' effects and deals double damage from its 3000 attack. I see this card being potentially powerful in control matchups and as a finisher. Thanks to Baxia's status as an awesome level 8 extender, the Sword Souls have access to the rank 8 toolbox, but I'd be surprised if they used it regularly since they already have access to the most essential effects through their Synchro toolbox, which they can access more consistently. There is one package that you might consider though. The Draglubion package allows you to choose between spell negation or enormous attack power with a single rank 8 play, depending on the situation. Choosing the first, Summon Draglubion and bring out Hope Harbinger with Numeron Dragon attached as material. You get two 3000 attack bodies, attack redirection, and a more versatile type of spell negation than Dragite provides. Choosing the second, Draglubion summons Numeron Dragon with 38 as material. Numeron detaches and goes to 7000 attack 
for an enormous single hit. In either case, you also get Draglubion, a 3000 attack and defense giant who can resurrect the numbers and do it all again if they are destroyed. I'll be honest, this deck doesn't really do links, but there are a couple you should make room for if you're playing the Tenyi package. Monk of the Tenyi is an engine requirement for the Tenyi cards, but his 1000 attack point body has some additional uses, especially as a target for destruction by Baxia or Sudden Shift. Play at least two. Shaman of the Tenyi is a last ditch extender. By discarding a card from hand, she reborns a worm in your graveyard, but unfortunately locks you into only using the effects of extra deck Tenyi monsters for the rest of the turn. I believe that she's worth playing at one just in case you get hand trapped into the ground or draw awkwardly. And that's it for the extra deck. I've been a big fan of the Tenyi cards since their release two years ago, but they've never really worked as a cohesive strategy, at least not at a competitive level. That will all change with the release of Sword Souls. The Tenyi monsters all share some things in common. They can be special summoned from hand while you control either no monsters or only non-effect monsters. All of them can turn into the non-effect Link 1, Monk, enabling more Tenyi swarming. And they all have a graveyard and hand effect that activates by banishing them while you control a non-effect monster, like your tuner token. Thanks to these qualities and their perfect levels, they can act as a powerful engine for Sword Soul. Tenyi Spirit at Hara is a level 1 tuner which carries a lot of utility in the Sword Soul deck. It can be used to turn a Baxia into a Chao Fang, turning off your opponent's light monster effects, but more importantly, it can tune with either of the level 7 Tenyis you play to make the level 8 Qi Xiao and start your Sword Soul engine. Its graveyard effect allows you to add one of your banished worm type monsters to your hand as well. Both the Tenyis and the Sword Soul thrive on banishing, so Adhara becomes a solid tool for recycling resources and ensuring follow-up plays after it's been used Synchro Summon. Play 3. Tenyi Spirit Vishuda is a level 7 non-tuner with a terrific effect that lets you bounce any card your opponent controls to hand, including back row, to clear the way for your plays going second. There's not much else to say. It breaks boards, baits negates, or makes level 8 synchros. Good card. Play 2-3. to three. Tenyi Spirit Ashuna is the final Tenyi in the deck, a level 7 non-tuner. It contributes to the same level 8 plays as the others, but also tutors out any Tenyi you need with its awesome effect. That gives it all the utility of the other Tenyis in the deck on command, in addition to its body. This effect does lock you into only special summoning worms for the rest of the turn, but that hardly matters since the non-worm synchros besides Baroness won't be summoned too often in the course of normal play. This restriction has hampered the card in the past, but not here. Play 3. The Tenyi have an excellent spell card too, Vessel for the Dragon's Cycle. This card on its own is a foolish burial for any worm monster, but when a non-effect monster is on the field, you can also search one Tenyi monster. This card allows you access to any Tenyi graveyard effect you need and searches an extender. Beyond that, it sets up revival cards like Spiritual Peaks and Baxia, letting you grab any Sword Soul monster from the deck, and sets up the graveyard for Taiye. It does a lot. Play 1 to 3, though I'm leaning towards 3. Thanks to the frequency with which Sword Soul craps out tokens, the Tenyi monsters will hardly ever be dead, and they add a bit of versatility to any deck they're in. Ashuna's harsh restriction has prevented them from seeing widespread play as an engine in the past, but this deck barely even notices. Here is a sample Sword Soul Tenyi deck list. The Sword Soul deck has potential synergy with any card that banishes. Some, like Gold Sarcophagus, can turn spells and traps in the deck into extenders, or set up at Hara for an add back of a missing combo piece. Cards like DD Crow, Cosmic Cyclone, Ice Dragon's Prison, and Call by the Grave all serve as alternate means to trigger Cheng Ying, and Pot of Desires does that while also increasing card advantage and consistency. Since everything important here is played at 3, Desires has no downside. Here are some lists that topped OCG tournaments early into Sword Soul's release. You'll notice that both play Instant Fusion. This summons Magic Key Beast and Sea Labolus, a level 4 tuner, as an extender in case one of your Tai A or Mo Yi plays is interrupted. So how do you beat this deck? First, hand trap the level 4s. The deck relies on the effects of Tai A and Mo Yi for most of its plays, and unlike Long Yuan, these effects are vulnerable to negation hand traps like Valor and Impermanence, as well as Gamma. 
Second, stop their banishing. Like so many decks that have been released over the past two years, Artifact Lancia will wreck this deck. Mo Yi and Long Yuan can still play, but you cut off many, many effects like Tai A and all of the Tinyis. In fact, this weakness may be an argument against playing the otherwise brilliant Tinyi package. But far and away the most effective anti-Sword Soul card at this moment is Token Collector. With no tokens, Sword Soul is cut off from the tuner half of their Synchro Engine. Unlike other hand traps, Token Collector also triggers in the graveyard, so one copy can protect you for multiple turns and shut off the Sword Soul Engine, unless they can remove it with Baxia, negate it with Qi Xiao, or banish it with Ruddy Rose or Cheng Ying, level 10s that are difficult to reach without the tokens. Basically, you better have access to alternate extenders, like the Tin Yis. There are a few other cards in the Sword Soul archetype, but they're frankly not that good, with offbeat effects that don't synergize well with the game plan. I recommend not playing them. One exception is Ecclesia, the Virtuous in White. This Ecclesia is a level 4 spellcaster tuner who summons herself when the opponent controls more monsters than her player. Although she doesn't have the Sword Soul name, on a main phase quick effect, she can Lone Fire Blossom any Sword Soul monster. Or Albaz, but whatever. This one's easy to talk about. Lone Fire Blossom quick effect? Love it. Level 4 tuner? More please. Has to be normal summon going first? Ugh. So don't play it. Or side 3 going second if you're a weirdo. In conclusion, Wow. I don't think I realized just how much I'm looking forward to playing this deck until I started writing, but every time I wrote a description of a card roll, the excitement started building. I think that this deck has a simple game plan, consistent and versatile plays, giant power plays, great resource management, space for staples, and art that's rad as hell. And it's already tearing up the scene in the OCG. Now if that is not a description of a tier 1 deck, I don't know what is. Learn it, love it, figure out how to beat it. Baxia for two. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment or a like. Here's a question. Do you think that Sword Soul has the potential to be the best deck of the format this winter? Let me know what your answer is in the comments and give me your reasons why.